Welcome to another video. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this bark effect using a template by Airshot Stencils. Let's get into it right now. The first thing I'm going to do is spray some flesh tone on the base of the canvas. This will be the base coat for the bark. Got a slightly darker mix here, so I'm just going to tip that into the color cup. I'm not going to wash out the previous flesh tone and that will just tint this original color. So put your finger over the hole, give it a quick shake and put your finger over the front and bubble it back. I'm just going to go ahead and dust that on the canvas as the previous tone I thought was a bit too light. If you get a bit of an uneven finish, it's not the end of the world. It's going to be bark, so you know what, I'll deliberately go uneven so that you can see how it looks. Let's lift up the canvas, hit some of those edges. We'll leave the flesh tone like that, let that dry off and then come in with the next tone. Going to go ahead and use brown. So this uh, brown by Trident is the true brown and it's a nice ready brown which is what I want for the base. If you don't have that particular colour, you could also use something like Burnt Sienna. First thing I'm going to do is just again dust over it, get a bit of that tone on there. Do some shadows in there as well. And now grabbing the bark template, what I want to do first is just sort of build up a bit of texture. in random spots. And I'm just using a reference from Google. I just uh, typed in bark wallpaper and picked one from there. It's one of the top results, so you can use the same reference and follow along. But I'm gonna only use it as a guide. I'm pretty much making up my own and just utilizing this template. So now I'm gonna go slightly heavier in spots. So again, to get those real defined sharp areas, I'm laying the template nice and flat. I'm not using any spray adhesive or anything, I'm just spraying directly through it, as you can see. It's just acting as a loose mask. And now it's building up a bit more texture, just gonna use that spray through it and move it around. When you move it, the texture will actually blur, so it gives you a totally different look. And I'm using different parts of the template as well, just continuing to move that around. You can see dragging it down, you get that sort of effect through here. Moving it up and down. So just play around with the template to get your different look and effect. Don't be afraid to build up quite a bit of texture on this. It's a fairly good start. So now I wanna get some darker areas in there using the same tone, but I'm just gonna freehand them. If you struggle with freehanding them, then you can um, use a paper template. Don't mind if I go up a little bit closer and spider it out a little bit. up nice and close and I'm moving with it. Now I've over thinned my paint, that way I'm getting these little areas spidering out on me, which is what I want, but you need to be able to control that. If you happen to go up too close, 
and you make a bit of a mess like that, just let it dry off and then I'll come back and you'll see what I mean. You can fix it up. Once it's dry, you'll be able to go back over the top of it and fix it, like so. So you can also use the air to dry it. And just blend that out into a larger section. Just some freehand dusting over a couple of areas to soften them off and to give that reddish tinge. And you can also pull back on the trigger and move the airbrush to get that uneven spotty shadow. Now I'm going to use some sepia brown. Grab the template again and I'm just going to get a few darker spots in there using that first. And you can move it around but you want to be a little bit more accurate this time. to go too crazy because I'm going to go back to freehand in a second. Okay, and now darkening off these areas with that sepia. Now you don't have to work your way right through that area. You can kind of just do a section and then feather it off and your eye will complete the rest of it. Definitely being a lot more deliberate now with the sepia. You can see how dark that sprays. Coming back in with the template and I want to work in some of that sepia around the edges. Just to further texture it all. Dust around freehand as well. Again dragging the template while I'm spraying through it. Watch that it doesn't get too wet and you drip it on the canvas. So move to another area of the template or put it down and let it dry. So we're going to go back to our lightest flesh tone, the first one that I used that I then darkened up. And I'm going to use some paper towel and just dab some texture on. You could also use a brush, but we want more of a blocky effect like that. And then drag it down. So these will be some highlights, so try and go into those highlighted areas. And then we'll stay away from the darker ones. If you get a little bit on there like that, that's fine come back and clean that up later. Can try and be intentionally uneven. It's not easy to do, but don't want to sort of repeat the same patterns. It doesn't have to be over the whole lot. I'm just sort of focusing on these areas and I'm going to come back in now, dab over the top and just highlight a little bit more. You might find something that works even better than this paper towel. If you do, I'd love to hear what you use to create this effect. Just leave that in the comments below. It's always interesting to hear what you guys come up with. More spots and we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to use a burnt umber. 
and just dust over a few of these areas just to tint that tone and dull it down a little bit, that uh, highlight tone. You can see I'm not going right over it, so I'm leaving some brighter sections. And do some freehand texturing with this as well. A little bit spottier this time. So just moving that trigger in and out, in and out, and just letting the airbrush kind of bounce around. You could also get another template and do this, or get the original one and kind of move it around, but I feel that if you mix it up with freehand and a template, it always looks a bit better than using the template too much. So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome. For all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video tutorial so far. If you are, share it out and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time I put out new content. Just really taking my time here with this burnt umber and adding that texture in the spotty sort of shadows as well as some sort of uneven shaded lines. Just break it up a little bit. And because this is transparent, this paint it doesn't eliminate any of our previous detail. And the more you tone over it, the darker it gets. If you don't have the exact same colors, that's fine. Just mix them up as close as possible or use these methods and just do a different color variation. As I said, I'm only using the reference as a guide. I'm not trying to totally copy it or replicate it hundred percent. Now switch back to the sepia and come back in and redefine some of these edges just to clean everything up. See I'm running some smaller, more defined lines joining up some of those areas. And working back over some of my lighter spots as well.
Now just carefully grab the template again and just going to add in a couple of little lighter textures in some of those light areas. I don't want to overdo it. Just a little bit. That's enough. And now coming back in with that original highlight tone, I'm going to use a brush this time and just pick up on some of these edges to give it a bit more of a 3D effect. So I'm only hitting one edge, I'm not going right around. I'm not using white. Like I said, this is the first flesh tone. As I think white would just be too stark. Again, nothing wrong with using a bit of a paintbrush. You could also airbrush it, but the paintbrush will give you a different effect because it gives you that harsher edge. If it's too harsh for whatever reason, you can always go back in with the airbrush and soften it off. But I do like that contrast. Close up of the completed canvas. You can really notice all the texturing now. Hope you have fun giving this a go. To continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.